All right. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all well. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about modafinil, and I'm going to talk about it specifically within the context of TRT. Uh, I'm not going to do a full in-depth breakdown on modafinil and go through every little detail about it. It's been done before. You can find videos on that. I'm more going to talk about the basics, and then I'm going to talk about my own experiences with modafinil, my own reflections and findings on it, as well as its particular use with TRT, both in myself and with my clients. So let's just go straight in. So what is modafinil? So technically, modafinil is classed as a wakefulness promoting agent. It's a fucking stimulant. Um, it does share some similarities with other stimulants, and then it also has some differences, but it's a stimulant. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. It's a stimulant. So it's prescribed for narcolepsy and sleepiness associated with sleep apnea on label, um, but it is also used off label for quite a few things, uh, particularly for depression, uh, for ADHD, for chronic fatigue, and for cognitive enhancement. Uh, and there's been some interesting use regarding the cognitive enhancement uh, properties of modafinil because when it was first developed, they actually tried to get it classed as a nootropic. And although it did not get approved for this, when you look at the research, it actually did show to have cognitive enhancing properties, just not enough for it to technically get classified as this. Uh, so it stimulates the peripheral nervous system as well as the central nervous system. And this is because modafinil, when we buy modafinil, uh, is a blend of two isomers, the R isomer, which is called R modafinil, and the S isomer, which is called S modafinil. So you can also buy R modafinil on its own, isolated, uh, and this only stimulates the central nervous system. For something similar to this, we can look at stuff like methylphenidate, which is a mix of the R and S isomers. Uh, and you can buy the R isomer as something called Focalin, which is only available in the United States. Uh, and then you can also look at Adderall, which is a mixed amphetamine salts, a mix of dexamphetamine, which stimulates the central nervous system, and levoamphetamine, which stimulates the peripheral nervous system. So Adderall is sold as a blend. However, you can also get just pure dexamphetamine to only stimulate the central nervous system, which is sold as just straight dexamphetamine, um, or it's also sold in a sustained release uh, version called Vivant. So modafinil is not fully understood. Uh, there are some mechanisms that are not clear, but what we do know is that it is a very mild but very targeted dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Uh, it has a very long half-life. So depending on what you read, it will say anywhere from between 12 and 16 hours. R modafinil has a longer half-life than the, the S isomer, S modafinil. Uh, so when you do take R modafinil on its own and you're taking a higher quantity of the pure R modafinil, it can last longer in the body, uh, but the half-life is around 15 hours. Uh, it is also an orexin releasing agent and it is a D2 receptor partial agonist. And this comes purely from the armodafinil side of things, which is why when you use armodafinil on its own, it does have some uh, different subjective effects, which I'm gonna talk about uh, a little bit later. So there are some secondary effects to the mechanisms of action for modafinil. So firstly, when you have any, well, most things that increase dopamine, but particularly anything that acts as an agonist for dopamine, you're gonna get a decrease in prolactin. and Modafinil actually also induces the enzyme which metabolize, metabolizes cortisol, so it can also decrease cortisol. So this can be a favorable thing when we're looking at stimulants, because a lot of the time when people are looking for a stimulant, it comes with the uh, unwanted side effect of increasing stress. So this is why modafinil can be favored for some people, and even why some users will actually report that modafinil actually helps reduce their anxiety, which is quite interesting from a drug that would typically although it's not technically classed as a stimulant, would fall into the stimulant category. So I'm just going to briefly talk about how modafinil is different from other psychostimulants like dexamphetamine, regular amphetamine, or methylphenidate, which is Ritalin. So amphetamines are both releasing agents of monamines, neurotransmitters, uh, and they are also reuptake inhibitors as well. Whereas something like methylphenidate, Ritalin, is a reuptake inhibitor of both uh, dopamine and norepinephrine. So Modafinil is just targeting the dopamine transporter, so it is acting just purely as a dopamine reuptake inhibitor, and it is a lot weaker than methylphenidate in this regard. So the question is, well, why would we want to go for something weak? Mizumi is the number one pick to clear acne in men on TRT. Check out the products using the link in the description under this video. And the reason is 
And the reason why modafinil is favored is actually because it's weak. And because when you're using a stimulant, you're not actually giving your body energy. You're not giving it metabolic fuel. You're putting your foot down on the gas harder. And the analogy that I like to use is that when you use a stimulant, you're borrowing energy from later. So the higher you go up, the further you have to come down. And this can be the unwanted side effect, particularly of using stronger stimulants like amphetamines, is that while they are very effective for you know, doing whatever you want them to do when you're on them, it can often induce negative effects when you're coming off them or the following days when you are then withdrawing from them. So the advantage of modafinil for a lot of people is it is gentler, which is the idea because it doesn't affect you negatively after the use, which I think is a very desirable thing, particularly if it's something that you don't want to use chronically, you just want to use it occasionally. So what would we use modafinil for? And it has a lot of different uses outside of its use for narcolepsy. So modafinil is a useful tool for occasional use to enhance focus, productivity, motivation, as well as counter fatigue. It's a very useful study agent. I wish I knew about modafinil when I was at university. My first experience with modafinil um, was actually, it was actually quite funny at the time. I was writing a large amount of copy for a supplement website, and I had to basically write the entire website's catalog of copy for the sales pages. And I'd got my calendar mixed up, and I thought it was due the following week, and it was due the following day. So I pulled it all nicer using the daffodil. And I found the effects to be very interesting because it was like I, I wasn't really on anything per se, but it was working very powerfully in the background and it completely reduced fatigue. Uh, it allowed me to perform at my peak capacity, although I was working you know, completely overnight, I was very sleep deprived and it was very powerful for getting me into the flow state. But what it didn't do was compromise my creativity, which other stimulants can do. So Modafinil is very popular among university students, but it's also very popular amongst you know, business executives, uh, people who are wanting to get the most out of their days. But it also can be used as a tool in the toolbox when you do need something to get you through a particularly arduous day, long tasks, uh, you know, things that you don't want to necessarily do. And it can be a good tool to use instead of you know, hammering the caffeine or hammering other stimulants particularly hard when this can be used in a lower dose or even synergistically with these other compounds, which I'll talk about later. So modafinil is also an effective treatment for ADHD, particularly inattentive ADHD and patients with high compt activity, which is responsible for metabolizing and clearing dopamine from the brain, respond best to modafinil. So there's actually a particular study which looked at people with the RS4680 SNP, which is known as the warrior gene, uh, which results in people metabolizing dopamine quicker. And they found that the people with this genotype responded more favorably to modafinil. So modafinil is nowhere near as strong in elevating brain levels of dopamine compared to amphetamine and methylphenidate, particularly compared to amphetamine. So what often happens is people will be regularly and chronically using something like Adderall or Vyvanse or dexamphetamine and then they'll hear about modafinil and they'll swap to modafinil and they'll go, this is shit, this doesn't work. And that's because they're used to something so much stronger that in comparison, modafinil is barely doing anything. You know, if, if you drink a bottle of vodka every night and then the following night you just have a beer, you're not really going to feel it. But if you have no tolerance to alcohol at all and you have a beer, you're going to feel the effects. So a lot of the time, modafinil gets a very bad rap in a lot of forums or people when they don't really understand what's going on because they're used to using something very powerful like an amphetamine. They potentially have a tolerance to amphetamine. Then they swap to something like modafinil and it's very underwhelming. However, when you go in with no tolerance and you're not using powerful psychostimulants a lot, modafinil is actually a very effective treatment for ADHD and the studies have shown that it is effective. The reason why modafinil is very, very good, and I've got this on the following slide, but I mentioned it here, is that modafinil is not subject to tolerance. So it was studied for up to three years of chronic use and there was no tolerance. The same absolutely cannot be said for amphetamine. So that's very, very important. Uh, so modafinil also has nootropic properties, which I mentioned earlier. So it has been shown to improve cognitive performance. And the reason why I like modafinil as opposed to using other psychostimulants is that when you use something that very powerfully elevates dopamine levels uh, or you know, elevates levels of, of norepinephrine as well, 
while it, it can be useful for doing things like monotonous tasks, it definitely does stifle creativity um, because a lot of that outside of the box thinking is eliminated because you are so laser focused. So while it can be useful for certain things, it can actually hinder other things. Whereas modafinil's nootropic properties often allows people to be more social, be more uh, sharp, be more switched on, uh, and it allows them to perform at a higher level. So although it doesn't you know, stimulate people as strongly as something like amphetamine or these really other powerful psychostimulants, it can often just give people enough of a boost that it acts more like a tool to kind of bring you up a, a little bit to your, maybe your peak capacity rather than going well beyond that and then triggering side effects. So modafinil definitely can be used daily. Um, but in my opinion, and from my experience, it's much better used in lower doses if you're going to use it daily. I'm going to talk about that in the dosing section at the end. So it can be used daily because you don't build a tolerance to it. And it also can be used, you know, occasionally as needed. So what comes up subjectively when people use modafinil? And this is from my experience as well as talking to a lot of people now who've also used this. So modafinil is significantly weaker than other prescription stimulants. As I mentioned before, it is significantly weaker, but that is the point. So do not expect to have the effect of, you know, 20 milligrams of dexamphetamine when you take modafinil. It's not going to do that. A lot of the time, people don't even notice when modafinil kicks in. It tends to have a very delayed onset. It can take up to 90 minutes to take effect. And it's something that you just notice, you know, you take it, you start doing your tasks, and then you notice down the track that, you know, you've been in the zone or things are very effortless. Modafinil is not something that you take and it's going to get you off the couch and it's going to make you stoked to clean your house and do all the chores that you've been putting off for the last month. What it's going to do is it's going to allow you to build momentum. It's going to allow you to stay on task and derive more a, more of a dopamine response from achieving these goals. So it's going to keep you on task and motivate you to continue doing what you need to do, but it's not going to give you that kick up the ass to get you going. And this is because it's not a releasing agent. It's not going to give you your reward for free like amphetamines do. What it's going to do is it's going to act as a reuptake inhibitor, meaning that the dopamine that you create from doing the shit that you're meant to be doing or doing the things that you want to do and ticking your goals is going to have a strong effect in the brain and that's how modafinil works so it has more of a background effect and as i said before it's something that people go that they might they may not notice that they've taken it and then go whoa i'm having a really productive really good day now this also comes down to dosing which i'm going to talk about later because dosing is definitely what can trigger side effects and they definitely have a noticeable effect if you take too much uh, so modafinil can also reduce social anxiety, increase mood and motivation, as well as cognitive performance. Modafinil is an effective antidepressant, um, and it is a very effective antidepressant in men. A lot of the time, people think that they want to be increasing serotonin to help with their mood. Generally not the case. It tends to be dopamine tends to yield what these people are looking for. So because modafinil is neuroprotective, uh, it is a nootropic, it is not neurotoxic, it's not going to cause tolerance, it's not going to cause a big come down. This should be the first point of call for if a psychiatrist or a doctor wants to prescribe some kind of dopamine agent for off-label or treatment-resistant depression, you want to be going for something like modafinil, the gentlest thing first and working up. One thing that I think is ridiculous in psychiatry when they're treating ADHD or other symptoms with stimulants is they start with the strongest thing first. You should start with the weakest thing first and then build up. So modafinil should, in my opinion, be the first point of call for these treatments because if you can respond to the minimal effective pharmaceutical intervention, then you're going to have the better long-term outcomes. So the reduction in social anxiety is very interesting and this is likely to do with the increase in dopamine but also the reduction in cortisol. So people often find that they're more sharp, uh, they're more verbally fluent, they're more in the zone, maybe they're even more pro-social, maybe they're more motivated to go out and socialize because they feel more confident and they feel more like themselves. So this can be a very you know, positive effect. And there are plenty of people who actually use modafinil to support or treat anxiety, which is quite interesting. So R modafinil, which is the right isomer of, or sorry, the R, the R isomer of modafinil, uh, is stronger milligram per milligram than the mixed salt modafinil. So it's not really known like what the equivalent milligram per milligram is, but I found that it's not 
twice as strong, like 100 milligrams of abadafinil is not the same as 200 milligrams of regular modafinil, but it's somewhere, I, I would say that it's about somewhere in the middle between, maybe it's about 50% stronger is, is what I would say, uh, but that's just me. So modafinil and armadafinil are typically dosed once daily, um, although some may benefit from splitting the dose. Now, if you're going to be using armadafinil because of the longer half-life, you can almost definitely just dose it first thing in the morning. And I recommend that people, if you're going to dose the daffinil, take it first thing when you wake up because you're, you're not, if, if, even if you do manage to fall asleep, you're not going to have good quality sleep for at least 12 hours. But the advantage of the daffinil is that even if it does wear off at the tail end of the day, it's not going to cause like an uncomfortable come down with negative symptoms. It's just going to wear off and you'll be able to fall asleep. It's not going to cause any kind of discomfort or uh, negative symptoms in the evening, like something like amphetamine or Ritalin can do. So some people do take half their dose first thing in the morning and maybe redose around midday if they metabolize it particularly fast or if they want to stay up particularly late. Uh, but generally, it's dosed first thing in the morning, and most people find that they're you know that they are they are definitely very awake for fourteen to sixteen hours after taking it. So. Armadafinil is typically smoother in response to modafinil, and this is because it doesn't stimulate the peripheral nervous system. However, if you take too much, and again, it is stronger milligram per milligram, it can still cause undesirable stimulation. So modafinil has more of an effect in the body. You feel it more you know, peripherally in your whole body, whereas the armadafinil is more uh, focused on the central nervous system, meaning it's more, more cognitive. It's more internal than external. Now, which one is better? It depends what you want. People often find that the peripheral effects of modafinil are more energizing, um, and that's actually what they like, whereas other people find the armadafinil is less likely to cause anxiety or uncomfortable effects. So it depends what you're looking for, and it depends what you're disposed to but typically i do recommend people just try regular modafinil first um, and then armadafinil is also an option um, and as i said before modafinil does not typically cause a come down or negative side effects the following day people do report that it can cause headaches the following day that can often just come from being dehydrated or not drinking uh, or sorry, not getting enough sleep because it can disrupt your sleep. Um, and that can also be a dose thing as well. So my first recommendation for people, if they say I get a headache every day after I take the daffodil, it's lower the dose. Always, if you're getting side effects, lower the dose with pharmaceuticals, lower the dose. Um, a lot of people take way too much modafinil, which I'm going to talk about later. Um, but typically, that, that's really the only thing that does come up. Some people do get the, the, the headaches regardless, and it just means that the daffodil does not agree with them, which is unfortunate, but it's just the way that it is when you're looking at pharmaceuticals. So chronic use may impair sleep. And this is because when you're looking at a half-life, it takes five half-lives to completely eliminate something. So modafinil will, to some degree, build up in the body with chronic use. Um, so some people do find that if they take it daily, their quality of sleep goes down. So it is important that if you are looking at taking modafinil daily, Firstly, you go for the minimal effective dose. Secondly, you take it as early in the day as possible, but it would also be wise to monitor your sleep before taking it and after taking it to see if you're having a significant change in REM and deep sleep. Uh, because if you are, then this could be causing long-term issues because messing with your REM and deep sleep long-term is neurotoxic. So it's something that you want to avoid. Um, it's not like that for everyone. Some people can definitely take modafinil daily and not have any problems with sleep. And it's going to depend on how quickly you individually metabolize the drug, how you metabolize and clear it in your liver. So modafinil has also been noted by quite a few people to change the smell of the urine. Um, it doesn't cause like a foul or, or, you know, toxic gross smell. It's not because it's causing any kind of toxicity. It's just one of the metabolites of modafinil does have a noticeable smell in the urine. So if it does change the smell of your urine, don't freak out. It's not causing a problem. It's just what modafinil does. Uh, modafinil can be safely combined with caffeine. And uh, I believe it's, it's Dave Asprey who is quite renowned for his synergy of combining modafinil with his uh, bulletproof coffee, which is a combination of coffee, uh, grass fed butter, and MCT oil, which, which has some quite interesting synergies to it. Um, it can definitely be combined with caffeine, but it's important to note that if you are going to be combining stimulants, always lower the dose. So if you usually have, you know, four cups of coffee a day and you're going to take modafinil, 
don't have four cups of coffee a day. If you do want to combine it, I mean, obviously try it on its own first. I think that goes without saying, but if you would like to combine it, maybe start by having one cup of coffee or two cups because they are going to potentiate each other. Um, so it is important not to induce side effects by uh, combining things into high dose. So when we're looking at dosing, the daffodil typically comes in tablets of 100 or 200 milligrams. When you buy it online, it's generally 200 milligrams. And armadaphanil usually comes as 150 milligram tablets, but it can come as 200s as well. Um, Modafinil has been safely studied in the long term with dosing up to 400 milligrams per day. However, modafinil can be dosed as low as 25 milligrams for beneficial effects. Now, I've even heard of people taking 12.5 milligrams, but I think a 25 milligram dose is a good starting dose for a lot of people to assess your tolerance and to assess the effects. The reason why I say this, and this is from a lot of experience with using modafinil, is that as you dose it higher, you're generally not getting more of what you want past a certain point. There is absolutely diminishing returns for the desired positive effects of the daffodil. And then as you go higher, once you go beyond the point of diminishing returns, then you're just going to get an increased instance of side effects. So if you do find the daffodil is causing you to be uh, feeling jacked up, overstimulated, uh, peripheral nervous system you know, uh, is, is feeling uh, too overstimulated and it's uncomfortable, you want to drop the dose. So I recommend starting low and working up. I do not recommend taking a high dose to begin with. The other thing to note is that it depends on when you are using the daffodil. If you are using the daffodil to elongate your, uh, your sleep cycle, to work against your circadian rhythm, if you're using the daffodil to stay up all night once you've already been up all day, you're likely going to need a higher dose. But if you're using the daffodil at the times in which you would usually be awake, you don't you don't need a strong of a dose. And that's very important to know. So I would recommend starting at 25 milligrams. Uh, 50 milligrams is, is the sweet spot for me personally, um, particularly if I'm going to be using it multiple days in a row. 50 milligrams works great for me. Um, if I use 100 milligrams, I find that it's not really what I'm looking for. So 50 milligrams works very well for me. I'm 110 kilos as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly a small person. So if you are a bit on the smaller side, I would suggest, you know, starting with 25. Um, increasing dose, as I said, does not increase the desirable outcomes. It just usually increases hope. And that's it. So that is modafinil in a nutshell on TRT. Now, one thing I'm going to add at the end is, and, and this is how I want to talk about the, the combination with TRT here and thyroid is that, a lot of the time, people are diagnosed with things like depression, anxiety, uh, chronic fatigue, or even inattentive ADHD when they have hormonal deficiencies, particularly in testosterone and thyroid. So a lot of the time, people are put on very strong psychostimulants when they actually just need testosterone and a lot of the time they need thyroid. So when they do increase testosterone and thyroid, Testosterone and thyroid don't work like pharmaceuticals in the sense that they are releasing agents or reuptake inhibitors for dopamine, but they do increase dopamine transmission. So what can often happen for these people is that, you know, if you're taking something like Adderall or dexamphetamine or Ritalin, and then you fix your hormones, you might find now that your Ritalin or Adderall is too strong. It's causing negative side effects, or you might find that you can't tolerate it anymore, but you are looking for something within that realm. So this is when I'd be looking at modafinil. I really do believe that if you are, if you have optimized testosterone levels, you have an optimized thyroid function, everything else is good. Your diet's good. Your lifestyle is good. You know, you're doing everything right. Using something like a small amount of modafinil can be exactly what people are needing. And it can be, you know, just as effective as someone who's maybe not as healthy and not doing the right things using something like amphetamines or Ritalin. So the reason why I like to use low doses of modafinil with guys for TRT is that because we've already got increased dopamine transmission to begin with from the optimized testosterone and thyroid hormone, just using a mild reuptake inhibitor can often be all these guys need to get what they're looking for without going into something that's going to potentially cause a higher risk of side effects or potentially neurotoxicity. So if you have any questions on modafinil, please let me know. Uh, if you would like to work with me or have any questions for me, you can find me at www.advancedfundamentalhealth.com uh, or you can always tag me in the TRT and hormone optimization group and I'm more than happy to help out with your questions.